modern high-tech warfare, there's still one job that relies totally on the individual. On his or her skills in the arts of stealth, camouflage and marksmanship. The sniper. One shot, one kill. Sniper, send it! Ben walking right here, man. Fort Benning in the state of Georgia is the home of the U.S. Infantry, the Rangers, and the Airborne, and the training ground for that most enigmatic of all soldiers, the Sniper. This is an inside look at the U.S. Army Sniper School. Alone or with a spotter, snipers can change the equation of the battlefield. They operate by stealth and cunning, hiding and waiting for a chance to take out the enemy one by one. Armed with an M24 rifle, spotting scope and supplies on their back, they can be on a mission for days. The element of surprise they bring to the battlefield can throw the enemy into chaos. One shot, one kill! Snipers first made an appearance during the American War of Independence. They proved effective again in the First World War. And in battles during the Second World War, both in Europe and the South Pacific, they began to have a major impact, even in the face of naval or air campaigns. The solo warrior was vital. The art of the sniper improved, and their effectiveness became most apparent in Vietnam. Their precision perhaps saved thousands of American lives. Army Major Willis Powell created the Vietnam Sniper Training Program in 1968. Once we get the snipers trained and in the field, the reports come in daily. It was just sky high. Snipers in Vietnam averaged 1.3 rounds per casualty versus several thousand for the average infantry soldier. Pat Felix, who served four tours of duty as a Vietnam sniper, says that for commanders, the silent warrior had a special role. He is his surgical instrument that he needs to do precise, accurate work. 21st century warfare is everyday business at Fort Benning. Abrams tanks and Bradley fighting vehicles, the beasts of mechanized infantry, practice here. Rangers take part in war games here, and the skills learnt have been taken to the Middle East. Tucked away in remote areas of the base, some of the world's best shooters are trained in the art and science of sniping. To become part of this elite, a soldier has to prove himself time and time again. You are slowing me down! Hurry up! First Sergeant Lewis Worrell is one holder of the Sniper Certification, the most coveted of all infantry qualifications. Nowadays, he runs the Sniper School, along with snipers Sergeant First Class Tommy Hooten, Staff Sergeant Dominic Barnello, Sergeant Eddie Montgomery, and their colleagues. Don't make me give you a zero because you're cheating. They have to try to make snipers out of men like Sergeant Carl Pratt, Sergeant Stephen Penix, Specialist Wilson Dickey, Brazilian Lieutenant Guillermo Ferreira, and Sergeant Joe Galvin, and all the other beginners. Elbows on the ground, men. Elbows on the ground. Get set. Go! It begins with PT, the physical test. Four, three, two, one, stop, change over. Failure to pass this can mean having to drop out. <sighs> one minute. The school is commanded by Sniper Captain Mark Trott, a West Point graduate, and First Sergeant Worrell. I feel fairly good about this group. I believe this group has a lot more experienced infantry soldiers in it than, than we normally get. I believe this group is going to do really well. The school is under constant pressure. The Army needs more covert operators. Will Class 0402 improve the graduation rate? These troops are Rangers, Airborne and Army Scouts. Their goal is to earn the distinction of Bravo 4, the Sniper Certification. Next. ID card, duct tags, milk card, orders, psyche valve, 
Weapons call. As the check-in continues, some men take the opportunity to study, as the training is theoretical as well as practical. Both will have to be mastered. It's not a threat, it's a fact. Probably half of you guys will not be here in five weeks. But at this stage, with five weeks ahead of them, they're confident. It's just going to make me better. Attending this course is a chance to learn the skills and the knowledge of the sniper and to bring it to my country to develop a new doctrine. It would give me a better advantage over regular civilians out in the civilian world whenever I decide to get out. I know I can make it. I know I can do it. I've been waiting too long to fail, sir. There are physical requirements that these students will have to uh, achieve here, uh, moving with a lot of heavy equipment, uh, moving in the ghillie suits themselves is physical. So we test them on the Army Physical Fitness Test to see if they have the requisite level of fitness to pass the course. The run is a relatively easy start. As others get on with their training, the sniper hopefuls complete orientation. They move into their new quarters, Spartan World War II era barracks. There's some people that might have had the luxury of different accommodations and they might think of it as just being a rat hole, but me personally, as long as I'm not sleeping out in the mud and in the rain, I'm golden. Sergeant Pratt has chosen class leader. You're gonna write your room number on there, and you're gonna go ahead and then write the names of personnel in that room. A veteran of Bosnia and Desert Storm, Sergeant Stephen Penix is, at 38, the class elder. Some of them are look, going to look at me and go, yeah, can he make it? Uh, there's three guys redoing the PT test tomorrow because they didn't make it, and I'm not one of them. So that's point number one right there. As they settle in, the can I make it question hangs in the air. The day starts early, at 4 a.m. A time to get acquainted and to wait. Time for Lieutenant Guillaume Ferreira from the Brazilian Army to reflect on cultural and language differences. Hanging over everyone is the physical fitness test score. In the first days, four men are dropped from the course. They didn't pass the physical test. Some may get another chance to achieve their dream on future courses. Some may not. I've always wanted to do this. Uh, my great-grandfather was a sniper, and that's why I joined the Army, was to come to this school. For the others, it's time to learn about the sniper's weapon. Gentlemen, this is your bread and butter. If you don't take care of your baby, it's not going to take care of you. U.S. Army snipers use a Remington M24 with a high-power scope. It has an effective range over 800 meters, more than half a mile. The sniper rifle has changed over the years. Most of these weapons were adapted from standard field issue. But the M24 has been designed as a total firing system, created by snipers with help from the sniper school. Though other services in the world use other rifles, the M24 sets standards for accuracy, dependability and durability. A new 50 caliber rifle is being tested in Afghanistan and evaluated at the school. It increases the range to 1800 meters and can penetrate armor and concrete. In Afghanistan, it's proved effective up to 2400 meters. Ready? It's week two for US Army Sniper Class 0402. Make sure that we have our bolt panel locked down so we don't lose it. Keep your muzzle out of the dirt. This is a week which will see their number reduced. The training is a long haul. And as they move out, they also move into uncertain terrain. Tasks in the second week include tests on range estimation computing the effect of distance and trajectory, accuracy on the range, and firing at night. Staff Sergeant Dominic Barnello is leading the quick pace march. He's the